on the course, but I don't think I like this angle. Like I wanted to be able to show the chopping salad. Let's see. Okay, I don't like it. Fix it. I didn't mean to hurt my phone. But yeah. The angle's just not good. So anyway, we are live. I have my hair in braids, okay? As you can see, I've left it in braids. And what we're gonna do is we are going to chop a salad because you know everybody's like how do you grow your hair long like what do you do like what kinds of things do you do to have long hair well I eat a plant-based diet I think that helps and I'm trying to get back into healthier eating habits honestly because I feel like at the end of the day the healthier your eating habit the better like your hair growth and no it doesn't mean you have to eat animal products to have long hair like some people think oh my gosh you must eat lots of animal products to have long hair no I don't I feel better without them I do supplement for B12 though but in general I don't eat any animal products okay I just don't I try to avoid any animal products the reason being is because I kind of just find that the vegan lifestyle is more ethically minded for me. You have to decide what's best for you. So the first thing I think I'm going to chop up, but I feel kind of sad because I realize you can't really see anything, is the salad. So I kind of be farther back. See more. Maybe the chopping salad. Okay, so first step first. We have a big head of lettuce. And we're going to take the plastic off the lettuce head. We're going to peel off its top layers. Hi, how are you doing, Robert? Peel off the top layers of the lettuce. Cut out the midsection so you don't eat the core. Just bought this lettuce the other day, but the core is really kind of like brown. We're cutting out that part. We're not going to eat it anyway. And then you have this middle section. Cut out. I think I got all of the core. And what you do is you can stick it under the faucet. And the water can go through here to kind of wash it out. the water drain back out and then I have my head of lettuce and I can go like this have a fresh section like this next section Thank you. 
I like this. They are really cool. I actually kind of like it. And I decided as much as possible just to, in my opinion, to kind of thicken up the ends of my hair. I'm going to try to wear my hair in a braid or two braids like during the week. I don't know about wearing my hair in two braids in certain situations, but one braid I feel good like maybe wearing my hair up less because I just feel like, I don't know, a lot of long hair ladies swear that wearing their hair up all the time is really better, but I do see more hair growth in a way and it's kind of an easy way to not have to detangle your hair every day but I actually think maybe it's better to brush your hair every day it's just it is time consuming that is the one thing about brushing your hair every day that some people might not enjoy doing is yeah it's a little it's a little bit more on the time consuming side right <laughs> so right here like I don't know right now I like the mild flavor of iceberg lettuce but everybody's always like well, you should buy romaine lettuce because it's healthier, but I don't know, like, really, it's a salad, and I put other things in the salad, and I really, well, iceberg lettuce, if you're on a budget, is cheaper, though, like, you can get ahead of iceberg lettuce, well, here in the U.S., it's cheaper, that's the thing, so I just feel like, yeah, I like romaine, but romaine can sometimes be expensive, and if you're encouraging somebody to maybe chop, by the way, I like to chop salads from scratch because people are like, well, you can buy the pre-bagged salad, but it's actually a lot cheaper if you just, like, I know people don't always have the time, but when you take the time to do it. And it's actually kind of cheaper in the long run. And then you can decide on the thickness of the veggies and how you like them a little bit more, I think. Hmm. I'm happy to eat a Thank you. that thank you it is a cool top because it's kind of um the butterfly top i've had this top for a few years and people always say oh like with fast fashion clothes people go through them really quick but you know actually i do buy budget pieces but my clothes last me for years because i buy things that i like and i take good care of them 
And that's another thing, too. I feel like a lot of people, they're overwhelmed because, okay, yeah, maybe back in the early 2000s when we had Mervins, I will say some of the tops were really high quality. Like, I have a black top that I've had since 2001 and two. It's still, it's still in really good condition. Um, but... Like, even if something's on sale, I think if you just don't wear it every day and you take good care of your clothes and you wash them and hang them to dry and you buy pieces that you're going to wear, like, you can repair clothing. Like, not everybody can afford, like, okay, it would be nice to buy the tailored high-end outfit, but not everybody can afford that, you know? And you can take good care of the clothes you do have. So, I feel like fast fashion, like, I don't, I would like things to be made in more places but the problem with fast fashion making people feel guilty about it is a lot of people they can't afford to buy their clothes at high-end shops so what if they can't I mean yeah they could go to a thrift store but thrift stores are kind of overpriced now in a way they're not the affordable locations they once were like a lot of that's changed like some things at the thrift store are almost as much as you pay at a full price store really full price for something new and if that's the case at that point I almost say you just buy it new and take better care of it or learn how to sew or something and I'm, I'm just like I have a sewing machine and I wish I knew how to sew because I think I really think yeah it's just I have so many other interests right now that would be another thing I'd have to work on and and right now I'm kind of working on this channel more like there's some ideas I'm having for wanting to improve live streams and whatnot for this particular channel that bit out. You have to live your life no matter what. You have to be like a believer in yourself. And I've just gotten, I've come to the foregone conclusion that if someone is negative to me and they say negative things to me, I can't give any, I can't give any credence to that because I think there's a lot of people, they, if they don't get their way, they kind of will say things to you. I don't know. Like, so, like, I'm not one of these people can just get easily over, like, mean comments. But I was just thinking, too, about the experience I had 
just with that person that said all those things saying well you better toughen up and blah 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 and he was saying that oh I'm just so mentally weak and I was thinking you know if somebody truly and legitimately were and they said those things to that person I feel kind of guilty personally saying something like that to someone because what if they like legitimately did have like some sort of issue that they were grappling with and you say something like that to them I mean I'm fine I don't really here I was just I just I don't really I feel like minding my own business is the best thing I can do right now I feel like I just I'm going to mind my own business 100% of the time even if somebody comes to me and they ask me to buy something I'm just gonna say no thanks I'm not gonna tell them what I think about that because you know it's not really my place I just minding my own business is just the best thing because I just want to focus on being me and meeting people who have like like minded um well this person okay how do I explain it I, I talked about this in a last video it was just this situation where I met this person and they wanted like some sort of casual relationship with me and I don't want that and not only did they want that they thought that I would be someone that could buy a whole bunch of things from them and I know that they were kind of just trying to get me like to me it's the whole you know multi-level marketing okay I'm not saying everybody who does that guilt trips people but I think there's a lot of that going on like if you aren't okay if they present the opportunity or you don't want to buy their product it's just this person was just it was all about me 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 um so yeah um how do i put it this way well i don't even know if they're jealous i think they were just mad that i wasn't going along with like something that they wanted to do like something that they were upset that I wasn't gonna just go along with their plan and I guess well okay I, I don't know the exact situation but I realized he has some older female friends that are friends with benefits okay in our town and they might buy something from him because he's cute and he kind of like he's into workouts and things like that and I think like a lot of older women that don't want a serious relationship with a guy like maybe late 30s old early 40s like they're gonna be okay with this young guy that doesn't want a serious relationship because they don't want that either and because he's kind of cute and he says charming things but I've had a couple of um run-ins with him where when I said no and I told them I want I'm looking if I'm gonna spend time with someone that it trans like it eventually is going into a serious relationship and I basically I just told them straight up I don't want to be your friend because you decided that you know you don't want to date me and it's not that I can ever not be friends with people like that but I just I don't see the point because I feel like you kind of led me on a little bit because you would pretend like sometimes you're interested but then you're not and he would say well all of my cues are completely clear I'm completely coherent I'm social I'm friendly but you're not completely that way and I feel like oh, I wasted a lot of my time like I was told just by friends don't talk to him again just don't talk to him again and I thanks so I decided, yeah, I will never talk to him again after that because he would always come back and message me and, but we're done this time completely because I don't have anything. Like, I feel like I can't even talk to him. I don't want to be his friend because friendship for him was, what do you want to buy from me today? And I had never had a friend before or a potential friend or potential whatever that was involved in a multi-level marketing scheme. I don't know like if everybody who's in the MLMs operates that way, but I'm beginning to suspect that they are very gracious to people because they probably read, there's a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's basically like what you would call the used car salesman, but I'm not saying that those tips aren't useful and you should be polite to, you know, people 
people that you're doing business with, but here's the thing. The people in the MLM, it's not a business, okay? And I've been watching videos about this and doing some research to find out, like, a little bit more about MLM. Pyramid schemes are not legal in the United States, but the way that they got around the pyramid scheme was, oh, if they had a product to sell, um, they can go get around FTC rules. So the MLM, it's, it's basically a pyramid scheme, okay? Like, it's somebody at the top is recruiting many people in and, and look my sister kind of fell for one too like I have some cute jewelry that she gave me it's from paparazzi jewelry but I had told her on several occasions I don't really think that that's a way you can make money she'd be like well all these people like that recruited me in or above me make mine they probably do because they got in early on and there will be some people they get in on the pyramid scheme early on, but get this. Okay, so you have one person at the top, they have recruit more and more people, and each person over them gets a cut of the sale of the product from the people below them. So let's say um, there are five people, and here's an example, jewelry, because that's one that my sister did. Okay. So let's say they start out, and there's five people that get in on this jewelry pyramid well, they call it multi-level marketing scheme, and they're like, you can work from home, blah, blah, blah. It's supposed to appeal to housewives and it also, I guess, a lot of military wives because they move around a lot. It's hard for them to have a job, and these MLMs kind of prey on those people who can't stay in one location and then seek um, permanent employment. So with the MLM, there are men in them too because obviously this guy I talked to, he was... I mean, the guy, but... So anyway, with the MLM, they start, let's say you start out with these five people. So they're selling jewelry, and then they recruit more people to sell jewelry, and those people under them, let's say, each of those five people bring in ten people. So you have five times ten, you have fifty. And those people sell jewelry, and the people, the five people at the top get a cut of what the 10 people below them. So it keeps going down and down. So they have something called a downline where they want to recruit more and more people in. And this has been an issue with this guy on several different occasions. Every time I've talked to him, I kept thinking, well, maybe I should give him a chance. And then when we hung out a couple times, it'd be kind of okay if we were just talking and stuff. But anytime over text message, he'd start talking about the multi-level marketing thing to me again. And he had mentioned he's just once casual relationship like friends with benefits i told him i'm not into that but i found out like he had a girlfriend she lives abroad he visits her sometimes but he doesn't really he wants to date her but not to be super s serious with her so yeah um this last time though i hadn't talked to him in three weeks and he started following me on Instagram again. He said, hi, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, I'm not going to talk to him anymore. I said I wasn't going to talk to him. So I did talk to him on Saturday. And he said, well, I'm going to come over and sell you funeral insurance. And I said, no, I'm not interested. And I told him, people aren't... And I kind of felt guilty in a couple of previous videos because I told him, you know, people aren't transactions. And, and I should have just kept my mouth shut. I shouldn't have said anything to him. I should have been like, okay, I'm not interested. Thanks. That was the recommendation of my mom. She's like, and I think she's totally right. Just don't tell someone, like, if you think that they're using you or um, they're a user, just, like, be no thank you and leave it at that. But I, I said, you know, I think it's strange you wanted to sell that to me considering that you didn't want to have a relationship with me and you don't want anything with me, but you expect that I want to buy things from me. And I told him what I thought, and I shouldn't have said it. I should have just kept my mouth shut because my mom is always right. I agree with her. She's right. I shouldn't have said anything to him. And then I said something to him about it. And he said, well, I should just be able to be your friend. Can you accept me being your friend? Oh, you're so weird. And I and it was, I told him, you know what? Every time, because it's come down to this on a couple different occasions where he apologized to me the last time saying that, oh, my friends say I can be real, like, that I lose my temper and I should be nicer. But yeah, I know where this was going. It's just... It's not going to a healthy place. I said, we can't be friends. We just can't. And, but, see, all that could have been avoided if I just not said anything to him. 
but it also because I tried several different times to communicate with him it was not good none of it was good okay I just don't think I mean he remembers me from several years ago I didn't remember him at the time but he remembered me but then when he decided to get back in contact with me I think it's just because he saw me as somebody that would buy stuff from him I'm like oh you might join a gym I like to work at it or you might buy this for me and that's the problem with the MLM so I'm trying to like step away not like take it personally and you know I'm a little bit of a sensitive person I think it's okay that was another thing he said to me he's like you better toughen up like just toughen up like and I was thinking gosh where's all this coming from like if he had said that to someone that was very vulnerable like what would be the result and I kind of started just looking up more and more about MLM over the weekend because I was fascinated and they're very predatory like they say things to people like this is an opportunity you, you're gonna miss out like they try to tell people that you need to be part of our organization so you can have a flexible income it's kind of like this guerrilla recruitment tactic really where they're not making money okay but they want to bring you in because every time they sell something or they bring somebody else in they do make a commission off that so they might not have a steady income but if they can get one person and this is the problem with the MLM like the people that they're going to be selling to it's going to be family members it's going to be friends and most people that are recruited into MLMs they're not independently wealthy people um, all the videos I've been watching about it people maxed out their credit cards they sometimes didn't pay the rent on time to continue buying like starter kits and things for the MLM so it's and then they go to their family members to sell like okay one of the things like the paparazzi jewelry thing like with my sister for instance she never tried to recruit people that way she's very nice about it but she did ask me a couple times to join I just told her I think this is a pyramid scheme that was before I really knew what multi-level marketing exactly was, but I kind of knew it sounded like a pyramid scheme. And then I found out what multi-level marketing was in my interactions with MLM. Okay. I just, I finally like, Oh, now I know what it is. Like, so I wouldn't recommend you join one. Okay. If somebody comes to you and they're using this term multi-level marketing, you want to stay away. Okay. Because that's not a business. So basically, it's kind of like Amway, Mary Kay, all these businesses. You could start your own business, like selling something. Like, let's say you like fashion. You could make your, design your own clothes, sell them, learn how to do that, and sell it on Etsy yourself, or sell it via your own website. It's 2019, you could use Instagram. There's many different tools. Or you could, I don't know, design your own jewelry. Learn how to make jewelry and do it yourself. Like, because the paparazzi jewelry, some of it's pretty, but it's not, some super high-end jewelry you could make those things yourself of course you wouldn't have that inventory to sell I guess it'd be a little bit harder but it would be a better quality product like to me at the end of the day most people don't want to buy all these things from people for a marked up price because with the paparazzi jewelry I would say that was one of the few ones that wasn't too bad like the prices aren't too bad but I had also at one time bought some I still have it by the way um, and this isn't to like criticize anybody, but I had bought this um, doTERRA essential oil and I've had it for two years and it's really good. We used it to get rid of bad smells in the garbage disposal the other day when I made a cabbage. So we've used it for several things, but a little bit goes a long way and no, you shouldn't eat it. That's really scary that people put it in food, but I found out the these doTERRA essential oils that that's like another MLM where they try to recruit people into selling that so yeah I've probably bought things a couple oh here's another one from back in the day if you're an American that you probably remember Avon like if anybody ever brought an Avon catalog into your office that's another MLM so they legitimize themselves by having a product to sell but usually it's it's just a pyramid scheme is what it really is it's like a modern version of the chain letter where when I was a kid we would get these letters in the mail saying oh you need to send this five dollars and then you send the same letter to all these people and you'll get five dollars but there was no product with that the pyramid scheme just legitimizes that the chain letter the getting more like 
don't ever do it. Like, just don't participate in MLMs because you're never going to make money doing that. Like, if you have something that you want to sell, like, create a product yourself and sell it yourself. You will have business costs, of course. You might have to, like, invest in it. But at least at the end of the day, you have more of a chance, more of a potential for that to maybe make a side business for you. Like, I kind of do that with Zazzle a little bit. Like, I'm never going to be a millionaire with Zazzle, but I've created a few t-shirts and things I've sold on Zazzle. Like, with my own artwork. I could invest more time in it. You could have a YouTube channel. You could write books. There's, there's a lot of other ways you can make money on the side. But the problem with the MLM is they present it as a life, like, as a way to make a, a full-time income. And it's just not that. Like, and it makes me feel bad for people that have been kind of tricked into thinking that they're going to make a full-time income. Uh, to ruin my solid again. <laughs> it just, it makes me feel bad for those people because... They prey on elderly people, they prey on single women that may have kids, military spouses, and I just thought, like, like just my opinion, if this guy could say those things to me, he probably does say similar things to other people, and maybe I was kind of sensitive and I took it a little personally, but I have to think about, like, why did he approach me in the beginning? It wasn't because he was interested in dating me. It wasn't because, like, he wanted to have some sort of future with me. It's just because he maybe thought I was attractive and he thought he could trick me into being part of, like, I don't know, like, some sort of friend that buys stuff from him. And I don't know, maybe some people want to do that. Like, if, hey, if you're a single lady and you don't want a boyfriend and you just want some guy that you think's cute that you buy, do you know what that is? That's a chigolo. Okay? <laughs> he was a chigolo. <laughs> like... There was a movie that Prince made about this. That guy, he's a chicolo, like, basically, and he doesn't seem to have any moral problems with it. Like, he just wants to do that. Like, Breakfast at Tiffany's, like, do you know what the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's is about? I thought, oh, it's this little boring movie. It's about prostitution, because she's a prostitute, and he's a prostitute, too. Like, he's a chicolo, like, he is an older woman financing him and she has clients herself so it's just funny because that that movie's about there's some old movies that are kind of i mean it's the oldest profession in the world but really at the end of the day i kind of had to laugh about it because that seems to be the thing but you know whatever People can do whatever they want to do. I'm never going to get involved with someone like that. And, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I was just too naive to think, oh, it might get better. It might be okay to talk to him this fourth time. Anyway, it wasn't. It ended up being really bad. I need the onions for my I didn't buy anything from I mean, just why I actually thought. Like, I I try to eternally be an optimist. And, oh, well, maybe, maybe this time it'll be better. Maybe, like, there was some sort of misunderstanding. And I guess that's what I felt bad about in one of my last videos. Like, I thought, well, maybe I'm judging this person too hard. But no. There was a reason that we weren't getting along. And it's because I wasn't going along don't go along with the program some people don't like it anyway so even though this is kind of like a salad making blah 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 thing hopefully this is a little maybe slightly educational because maybe it'll help you avoid joining the MLM if somebody ever suggests that to you so anymore on the side my lime
Okay, well, have a good evening, okay? Bye. So what I do is I just take the limes and I kind of start squeezing too and then as they're losing juice I've found this trick where you take a new half section and you use it as like the, the centrifugal force to make the lime juice like squeeze out. These are the best lime squeezers I've ever had by the way. So much better than the other ones that those little twisty ones. So it's in if you get limes, make limeade. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that. Let's do the lemonade because I have to have limes in the fridge. I need to use them in my effort to try and eat out less. I am trying to make prep salads for tomorrow, so I'll have something ready to prep. And I don't rush when I cook, by the way. I just take my time because I'm like, who am I rushing for anyway? Like, I don't see the point in rushing. I just take my time. Because I don't like to rush if I'm just doing, making a salad. Like, why, why should I rush? So I'm just chopping the carrots like nice and tiny.
really big.
cleaning as I go. Yeah, when I make a salad or anything, I just take my time. I'm not in a rush. Take hummus and I kind of like spread it in. So you could puree some and make your own, of course, but I have a lot of ready made hummus, so I'm just using it up because why not? that chipotle powder on there.
really is environmentally better to make your own hummus than these pre-packaged ones. They're nice though. Okay. I'm going to take for lunch if you're a vegan. Like, they come at Costco like in the well, thing about this hummus is I think it's super bland. Like it have, I personally feel like you have to add something to it to make it actually taste better. It's just super bland in my little opinions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hummus. Massaging the hummus into the salad. So I took iceberg lettuce, um, scallion, onion, tomato. Now I'm putting hummus on the top. Chipotle powder. very tasty. Nobody really likes salad, but I make it around the house, so I don't mind if I look this and stir it because nobody's going to eat it except for me. If somebody else was eating it, yeah, I wouldn't do that. But I can rest assured nobody else really likes spicy. And it doesn't even taste spicy, honestly, because I just put in a tiniest bit of chipotle powder because, I don't know, it just livens it up a bit. It gives it a little bit of flavor. Now we need, I have some vitamin B12 supplements, but I think I like it in the nutritional yeast format. It looks like cheese, but it's not. It's, um... Nutritional yeast, this is from Sprouts. I bought this one. Well, you can probably Let's see. This one is path in Los Angeles, California. It's not too far from here. It expires in December 12, 2020. Oh, by the way, did you see my new Hannah artwork for the fridge? I kind of like it. So, I need to kind of incorporate this all down without making a mess. Lightly massage you all in. It's a little bit of a job here. Get some, some new salad, fresh salad, and seasoned salad from the bottom. It hasn't gotten seasoned yet to the top, but I should bring some of that back down. It tastes really good when it sits in the fridge and kind of marinates. Oh my god. It gets so good later. I needed a bigger salad bowl, buddy. This is so much better than potato salad. I hate potato salad, by the way, because it's mayonnaise. But I have never made vegan potato salad. Oh my god. That's one thing I want to try thought about that. I do want to make vegan potatoes. Mm. Yes. It's all over the side. Anyway, I think it's time to try some of the salad. Let's rinse our fingers and go get a fork. Yeah, I kind of don't like to use soap 
soap all the time when I wash my hands. Well, I do use soap. But what I kind of just like doing that feels really good is um, this area in Austin. So they have I'm going to try some of the salad and see what it tastes like. Mmm! It's pretty good. I like it anyway. It is pretty tasty. Mmm! I don't think it can taste the chipotle powder. powder. I said like that roast spicy flavor but not overwhelming. Very good. It's a pretty good little salad. I like salad because it's a little bit different each time. But I know it's one of the best things I can be eating for myself. But yeah, I put hummus on top to get the protein into the salad. So it's where the protein comes from in the salad is the hummus. Oh wow, it's really good. It's really tasty. Anyway, thanks for watching.